What's going on everyone? Gourmet here. Today I've got an absolute banger for you guys. I'm bringing you guys my first 4141 tactic. It is called the Four Horsemen. It's absolutely phenomenal. Tested it with three teams, two teams in Germany, one team in England. It was the results are absolutely incredible. I'm very, very happy with it. Uh I could say it's the best results that we have had, especially in the league. Um, uh, so yeah, we will be going over that today. Now, before we do get into today's video, please feel free to leave a like comment and subscribe. If you guys do happen to enjoy today's video, I'll be linking a tactic down below in the discord. So make sure to join the discord. If you guys would like to download the tactic. Also, we have an amazing community over there, so it would be great to have you guys join. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. So, here is the Four Horsemen. That's what it will be called in the Discord when you guys go to download it, if you guys would like to download it. Now, we've got an advanced forward on attack. All that we added to him was shoot more often. He is kind of the main goal-scoring threat for you, but because you got two wingers on attack and a central midfielder on attack, there are more goal-scoring options for you still. So, the wingers on attack both have aim crosses at center and shoot more often on. They are very, very good at doing their job. When I was watching over what they do in-game, they're absolutely incredible. Now, the center mid on attack, all we added to him was tackle harder. So, he's got get further forward on, which is the natural thing that a center midfielder on attack has on, and then tackle harder. We've got an advanced playmaker, although we added him, was dribble less. Ball winning midfielder, we left as is. We've got two inverted wingbacks, and we left them as is. And I, I was very surprised with how they played because they they still play very, very good offensively, even though they are inverted wingbacks, and they come in, play around here more often than just flying up here. But when the time does come for them to get further forward, they definitely will for you. Then the central defenders on defend, all that we added to them was tackle harder. The goalkeeper on defend was left as is. We played with a positive mentality. Now, with the attacking width, we went a little bit wider. We pass into space. We play out from the defense. We work the ball into the box. We have dribble less on and a slightly lower tempo. Um, in transition, we have counter press, counter Distribute to fullbacks and distribute to center back, so distributing to the defense. And then out of possession, we have a much higher line of engagement, a standard defensive line, extremely urgent pressing intensity. And of course, with the set pieces, we've got the elite corner set pieces and elite set pieces overall. And let me tell you, they really, really showed out with this tactic, uh, and especially with the three teams that we used. Very, very good. Uh, there will be a moment during the highlights of the in-game play where you see, I think it's like three set-piece goals in one game. So it, it's very, very good. I highly, highly recommend. If you don't go for this tactic, definitely try out the set-piece tactics. They're absolutely insane. I'll be linking them in the Discord as well. Now, without further ado, let's get into the team and player overview. All right, so the two teams that we tested with in Germany were Borussia Dortmund and RB Leipzig. They finished first and second. Dortmund on 70 points, Leipzig on 69 points. They were both very, very good. Both hit 21 wins. They were absolutely phenomenal. And if Leipzig got one more draw instead of a loss, they actually would have won the league based on goal differential. So both teams absolutely phenomenal with this tactic. Now, Getting in to the team overview, most goals, Dortmund and Leipzig both joint for second because they both had 62 goals in the league. Most shots for Dortmund in third, RB Leipzig in fifth. Fewest shots against Dortmund in second, Leipzig in third. We go to most triples made because we are not in the other three between that. RB Leipzig had 112. They were joint fourth with Schalke. Most shutouts, RB Leipzig had 19, Dortmund had 16, and then fewest conceded, Leipzig only let in 23, Dortmund only let in 25, then the next lowest after that was 34. So, solid defensively, definitely solid defensively, 
Um, now, most tackles won. I wish we were in, but they these teams are very attacking, um, and it, it will definitely show when you guys see the end game play of these teams. Uh, but now getting into the player overview, Erling Holland led the league and goals. He had 18 goals. And then Alexander Sorloth was in sixth, and he had 12. Most assists, Rafael Guerrero had 10. Jaden Sancho with nine. Most shots, we've got Erling Holland in there with 84. Most player of the match performances, Marco Royce with five. Most key passes, Rafael Guerrero with 96. And Helena with 81. Best pass completion, Mats Hummels with 95%. Most tackles won. We are not in. Most triples made. However, we are. Justin Koiver with 40. He was absolutely phenomenal in this tactic. Jane Sancho had 32. Most shutouts. Peter Gulashi with 19. Roman Berkey in second with 16. Fewest conceded. Peter Gulashi in second with 23. Roman Berkey with 25. So, like I said, overall tactic very, very good. Very, very happy with what these teams did here in Germany. And now let's look at what the squad did overall for these two teams. All right, so first we are looking at RB Leipzig. Alexander Sorloff had 19 goals. Marcel Sabitzer with 14. Justin Koiver with 11. Yusuf Paulsen with 9. We've got Nkunku and Dio Upamecano, both with 7. Nordi Mukiele with 6. Campbell with 3. Dominic Srabosli with three, multiple others with two, and a few with one. So everyone chipping in in some way, shape, or form. Now, with Nkuku, he played the center mid on attack role. And as you can already see, he had seven goals, seven assists. Center mid on attack role is very, very important for this team. Make sure that when you are using this tactic, you have a player that can kind of do a little bit of everything for you, like a N'Golo Kante, a Sergei Milankovic Savic, uh, because, yes, they still do need to defend, but the playmaking ability definitely needs to be there, and a player like N'Golo Kante can finish from time to time. So even though their finishing may not be out the wazoo, still definitely give a player like that a go in that role, and they will definitely, definitely be a big boost to your squad. Now, assist-wise, we've got Angelino with 11, Danny Olmo with 11, Dominic Srabosli with 11. These are very young players succeeding in a very big way assist-wise with this tactic. So th this proves you don't need to have the elite of the elite. You can have a younger team and still get some very good production out of your players. Emil Forsberg had 8, and Cuckoo, like I said, with 7, Sorloth, as the striker had six, we've got Koiver and Haidara both with five. Limeyer with five. We've got Sabitzer with four. Mukiele and Paulson with three and a few with one. Now, let's go over to Dortmund. All right, so we've got Erling Haaland with 27 goals. Marco Royce with 15. Jaden Sancho with 11. Thorgan Hazard with eight. Akanji and Brandt both with five. Mats Hummels and Axel Witzel with four. Four. Thomas Delaney with three, Zagadu with two, and multiple with one. Now assist-wise, we've got Rafael Guerrero with 19 assists. He played the inverted wingback role or as the center mid on attack. Both roles that he was playing, he was absolutely phenomenal in. Um, so it, it proves center mid on attack. They are an integral part in this tactic. And the inverted wingbacks, when given an opportunity, can still produce assist numbers for you when needed. Now, Jane Sancho, he had 11 goals, also had 11 assists. That's very nice. Marco Royce had seven. Thorgan Hazard also had seven. Erling Holland, the striker, had six. Emery Chan had five. He played uh, the defensive role, the ball winning midfielder role, and he was very, very solid. Uh, Julian Brandt had four assists. Giovanni Reyna had four assists. Axel Witzel had four assists. Jude Bellingham and Thomas Delaney had three, Munir with two, and a couple with one. So everyone, once again, contributing in some way, shape, or form. Um, it, it's very, very nice to see that even though it's a little bit of a different tactic, 
it, it works very, very well. And now let's get on to the English club. All right. So here we are with the English club. We tested it with Manchester City. They won the league with 86 points. They were absolutely phenomenal with this tactic. And there is a game that they won 8 nil, which you guys will be seeing in a few moments. They were absolutely phenomenal. Now, Man City did only win the league, and I forgot to mention, with the German clubs, Dortmund ended up winning the German Super Cup, and RB Leipzig won the DFB Pokal. So, multiple trophies between those two teams. Very, very happy with that. Man City winning the league with this tactic. Very, very happy with that. Now, getting into the team overview, we have got most goals. Man City had 91 coming in first, most shots four. They were in fourth, fewest shots against. They were in second, best pass completion. They were in seventh with 87%. Most possession, they were in eighth with 50. They are not in most tackles won, but most dribbles made. They had 169 finishing in first, most shutouts. They were in second with 18. Few is conceded, they were in second with 30. So overall, very, very good, and it helped them win the league. Now, for most goals, Sergio Aguero finishing in fourth with 18 goals. Most assists, Raheem Sterling joint first with 14. Kevin De Bruyne joint fifth with 11. Most shots, we've got America Porte in there in sixth. Most player of the matches, we've got Kevin De Bruyne in there with six. Most key passes, Kevin De Bruyne had 149, and he finished in second. And then Bernardo Silva finished in seventh, and he had 118. Best pass completion, we have got Americo Laporte in seventh. He had 95%. We were not in most tackles won or most dribbles made, even though the team had the most dribbles made during the season. Most shutouts, however, Ederson was in second with 18 and few has conceded Ederson in second once again with 30. All right, getting into the squad overall, Sergio Aguero had 24 goals. Raheem Sterling with 17. Would love to see him do that in reality for him. Uh, Kevin Bruyne had 11. Farron Torres had 10. Gabriel Jesus with 9. Ilkay Gundogan with 8. America Port with 8. Ruben Diaz with 6. Zinchenko with 5. Riyad Mahrez with 4. Four, Rodri with three, multiple players actually with three. Rodri, Bernardo Silva, Jao Cancelo, John Stones, Fernandinho, Phil Foden with two, Ake and Walker both with one. Then we go to the assist numbers. Raheem Sterling not only had 17 goals on the season, but he had 19 assists as well. So if he could have a season like that in reality, everybody would freaking love him. Bernardo Silva had 14, same with Kevin De Bruyne. You got L.K. Gundogan with 9, Drao Cancelo with 9, Kyle Walker with 6, Sergio Aguero with 5, Zinchenko with 4, same with Rodri, Ferran Torres with 3, Marco Port with 2, same with Benjamin Mendy, John Stones, and Gabriel Jesus, and then Riyad Mahrez, Ruben Diaz, Ederson, Phil Foden, and Fernandinho all with 1 assist. So overall, Man City absolutely dominated in the Premier League just like they usually do. Uh, this tactic, though, they were something special uh, in-game. So, yeah, without further ado, let's see how this tactic does in-game.
All right, so there we go. That is the 4141 called the Four Horsemen. I hope you guys did enjoy this tactic. It absolutely blew me away on how well they did with having a striker that's pretty isolated up top and then having the wingbacks as inverted wingbacks and everyone contributed in every way, shape, and form. So it, it's it was a very, very nice surprise to have a tactic that worked this well with this setup and you have a team finish first and second in the same league uh only separated by a point so that's absolutely phenomenal but if you guys did happen to enjoy this please leave a like comment and subscribe and if you guys want to download this tactic like i said it will be down in the discord for you guys to download but until next time have a good one Bye bye <laughs>